Hello, everybody, and welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Leah. And this week, we <laughs> have gone deep into our dreams. Deep. <laughs> deep in our dreams. And they were strange, as in Strange the Dreamer, by Lainey Taylor. That's right. Yes. But before we start jumping right into that, what else have you been reading? We forgot to even talk about this. I know. I thought, I thought about that like, last week, too. I was like, good what? Lord, good thing we didn't uh, talk about our summer books or else the episode would have been an hour <laughs> long. <laughs> but just quickly, quickly, what have you read this summer? Um, I read all of that like light and fun romance books. Mm-hmm. And I got into an author because it was all of her books were kind of like light and fun. Uh, and I think I read six or seven of <laughs> hers. Mm-hmm. And then I got into a little deeper, darker uh, author called Fiona Cole. And so it was a little more sexual romance mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, but the first author, author, author yeah, was, author. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't pass that by and be like, yes, that's a word. <laughs> Word. It's a new word. We've just introduced it. No idea what it means, but we're going with it. It's my my it eyes are faster than my brain. Um, <laughs> the first author I read a ga- gazillion of her books this summer was Annika Martin. Do you know who she is? I think you talked to me about mm-hmm. it, but I'm not sure if I read any of her They're stuff all tropey yet. romances. The um, romance is called The Billionaire's Fake Fiance. So a billionaire and a fake Beyonce, oh, this is right up and a haters to lovers, and a friends to lovers, <gasps> and the there's tropes. like oh, so so tropey. But this Fiona Cole uh, is a voyeur series, and it is a little bit darker because it deals with like people with trauma, and they go to this. It's not a sex club. They keep saying over and over, mm-hmm. but it's like a live porn club. But where it you're is the, kind of a sex club where you're the voyeur <laughs> at it. All right. Now, recently, I have a friend who has been to one of these clubs that exists here in Sweden. And she no. was like, yeah, it does. And it's not far from where we live either. No, <laughs> I don't need this information in my life. I was perfectly and fine. And you can go this. and be like totally normal, just have drinks. And you get to be a voyeur and like watch it go down. Some of the rooms have closed doors and black windows. Some of the rooms open doors or clear glass so you could see through and a lot of the doors have different themes so some are like bdsm and some are just like light love romance some are threesomes anyways it's happening (laughs) it went from all my reading to real life so when are you going Uh, did you have a visit (laughs) scheduled you know i don't think they'll appreciate a pregnant woman (laughs) Maybe that's somebody's fantasy, but uh, oh, right, yeah, you just announced your pregnancy, and that. Dun dun dun! dun, dun, dun. <laughs> We're having pod, pod babies. Pod babies. Uh, yeah, uh, so no, I'm not really at I'm that not stage. Having pod babies. You are having pod baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. Thanks for that. But no, I'm not at that stage to go in there just yet. But when I get the body back, maybe I will wander through and take a little peek. Why not? I'm not a judgment kind of person. I think like love is love and sex is sex. Whatever you want to do. I really don't have very much judgment on either case. That's good. That's That's good. (laughs) What have you been reading? I I don't, but I'm not sure if I'm really interested in going to to even be a voyeur at uh, watching people have sex. I don't know. Like it's not really my... Would you be the other way around? Like have somebody watch you? Oh, no. No? No. No, I am not an exhibitionist either. Look, I am boring. <laughs> Let's just get it out there. Okay. So. Missionary for life. Missionary for life. Yeah. No, 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 not even. Uh, I'm just going to keep it secretive here. You guys can get in on this. It's all secret. I'm going to cry right. off now. Okay, Good. what have you been what reading? What have I been reading? <laughs> I read The Box in the Woods, uh, which is a truly devious number four book by Maureen Johnson. And I actually read all of her books uh, a couple of years back. So I was very excited when I saw that this was coming up because it was the same people as the other truly devious books, which I really liked. So I read that. And then I fell deep into the Victoria Schwab and yeah. D.E. Schwab. Yeah. Um, the author of Adi LaRue. We loved it, loved it Lerue. so exactly. much. So I read The, Sa- the Savage Song and um, Our Dog Duet, which is the duology called Monsters of Arity. 
Uh, and then uh, obviously I had my birthday this summer, which I've already talked about, and I got a bunch of books for that with all hotter with it. So I've read nice. most of those. I have one left. <clears throat> um, and they were really good. Not quite what I probably would have chosen for myself because they were a bit more... Um, well, I like my characters to be somewhat likable, and a lot of these characters were not. And, and I have a hard time connecting with people that are just truly awful all the way through kind of thing. Mm. I like redeemable qualities. Um, but I did really enjoy um, the Shades of Magic trilogy by yeah. uh, V.E. Schwab, um, which is a darker shade of magic, a gathering of shadows, and a conjuring of lights. I really like these. And I am excited to keep reading V. E. Schwab and Victoria Schwab books. Mm. So this and obviously our book club book, of course. Yeah, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by. Taylor and that's today. Jenkins book club Reed. is today. today. <laughs> um, but now, most recently, obviously, we read Strange Dreamer. Yes, by Lainey Taylor. Because um, we're in the flow, in the mood for these Addy Larue style books, where yes. it's creative and a thinker book, you know. Yes. Um, but then what happens is they're long and they're a little they harder. Time, they take time. And you need to yeah. Focus. You can't just plow through them. Yeah, for sure. So it was a little bit of a struggle here because we were late out. Uh, in but the start was late. We were late in the beginning here yeah we started off a day late our pod came out a day late last week and well we are scrambling now because it's coming out tomorrow <laughs> and we are last minute recording it just to give ourselves time to finish this book and actually read enough of the next book so if you guys did not have time to finish reading this with us we understand <laughs> it was a struggle for us and we read fast <laughs> so but saying that i really really enjoyed strange the dreamer when I was reading it, um, I found it, it was highly rated. And this is sometimes a little bit of a um, red flag for me because I get my expectations up too high and then I will find it disappointing, even if it's not, because I will expect it to be fantastic because everyone else has said that it's fantastic. Mm. But um, but I, I did really like it. It was a very slow start to it. Uh, it was lots and lots of world building, which yeah. paid off all of it in the end. And the language, too, was quite in yes. advanced. So, um, and a little bit from a different time, I would say, also. Mm -hmm. It's like, take a scholarly literature yes. and then put it back a couple hundred years. And then you're like, well... That's why I didn't know that word. <laughs> well, it was great for your, you know, uh, a, a word a day calendar. Yeah, you know, to just exactly. choose one from here. It was exactly. fine. Exactly. But to just sum up the, the book uh, quickly, uh, it starts with Laszlo Strange, who's an orphan. And he, when they found him, he was gray and he didn't scream. So he was named after a monk's uncle with no tongue because he was quiet. Um, but then he grew up and he was going to be a monk, but then all the other monks got food poisoning and he had to deliver something to the library and he ended up at the library instead because he's fascinated with stories and with mm. books and he is absolutely the most fascinated with the town Weep, which had another name, but it disappeared off of all the books and out of everyone's mind at the same instant about 15 years ago. Uh, and when he's at the library, he collects all of the stories about Weep and he puts them all into anything he can find of Weep and he puts it into his own notebook. So he has like the complete works of of, uh, of uh, Laszlo Strange, which is all about Weep. And he also finds like the key to, to making gold, like an alchemist. And he helps uh, Thion Nero, right. who's like the, the golden boy and the golden scholar. Um, he basically gives him the key to, to making gold, uh, to solving his problem. Uh, and Thion, instead of being like grateful and, and mm -hmm. cool and become friends with Strange, he just becomes even more of an asshole. And now he wants to mm -hmm. kill Strange because mm -hmm. he's the only one who can kind of um, we were wrong in our prediction there, we or I was wrong, wrong in the yeah. prediction there, no, where I thought there was a spark of love yeah, interest between the two of them. Hate interest. It is not love. <laughs> um, and yeah, because he's the only one who has who knows the secret that that it wasn't actually him. Uh, but anyways, then some people come into town on like these mythical creatures, and it turns out that the, they're from the city of or the village, the town of Weep, and mm -hmm. they need help, and they need certain scholars, they need certain like. Um, people with expertise, I guess. Um, so they interview people and Laszlo manages to squeeze in there by just, you know, 
volunteering to do anything just so he can go with them. So he gets to go with them. And then they ride across, around to different towns and they collect all of these experts on, on different areas. And then they make their way back to Weep. And then it turns out when they get to Weep that all of the stories are true, basically. There is a mountain made of God's bones. Yeah. And above the town of Weep, they realize that the problem is that there's a freaking massive blue metal angel just hanging in the sky, blocking out all the sun. So nothing grows really in Weep and people are very miserable. And in this massive angel, there used to be gods, blue skinned gods. Uh, and they would be terrible because basically what they would do was come down and steal away young girls mainly, but also sometimes young boys. And bring them up to the citadel, the angels, um, the habitat there is the citadel. And uh, basically rape them and make them have babies for them. Hmm. And then wipe their memories and drop them back off at home. Where they would have no memories of like lost a year or two. And they would have like the marks showing that they had been pregnant and carried babies and whatnot. So awful, awful all around. Yes. So um, 15 years ago... Uh, one of the boys that had been stolen, um, Errol Fane, Fane, Errol Fane, I think his name is, um, he had been kept for longer than most, and he was kept as a, a sex slave I want to call, for for one of the goddesses, and um, he'd actually sired a baby with her. Mm. Um, so that was one of the babies that was his. But then when he's up there, he sees that his wife, because he got married, they got married young before either one of them could be taken up to by the gods. Uh, she gets taken up and she gets raped. And this basically makes him lose it. And he gathers up all the other humans and he goes on a rampage and he kills all of the gods with like kitchen knives and whatever harsh metal they could find. And... They kill everyone and then they come back down to, to the city of Weep. But in the last moments, uh, one of the goddesses who was, uh, could take your memories away, she steals the name of the town. And the Sakis Nasatis, God, my name, my name, memory is terrible here. He, the one who could control this metal that's, um, mess with him, um, he, I just want to see what his name is. Da, 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 da. Satis, I think. Um, he is a last act of uh, of defiance. Scatis. Um, he opens the wings of the mm -hmm. of the angel and makes sure to cut off all the sunlight to the the town of Weep. Uh, and um, what they don't know these. Um, humans that are killing and they're killing the babies in the nursery as well like they kill everyone is that in the nursery there was a six-year-old little baby god and uh she basically takes two toddlers and two babies and she hides them away and they're the only survivors and they've been living on their own up there and this little six-year-old she is uh, minya and her power is that she can tie uh, go uh ghosts souls and she can make them do whatever she wants, basically. So all the people that work for them up and take care of them up in the citadel are all ghosts that are tied to her. But all of this, her rescuing the babies, her tying the ghosts, her making all of this work and hiding them, it basically, she put all she was into this, so she stopped growing. So she's still a six-year-old mm -hmm. in her body and everything. <clears throat> um, and then, so this is what happened in Weep. And then they get there, they figure this out. And then Laszlo, one of the girls, the god spawn girl, Sarai, she, her power is that she, every night she goes and she screams and moths come out of her mouth. And they're not actually moths, they're kind of like parts of her consciousness. And they fly down so she can look at the humans and she can also sit on them when they're sleeping and enter their dreams. And she, they can't see her when she's in their dreams. So she does this when Laszlo comes to weep and she sits on him. And then she goes right up to him, like right in his face to get a better look. And he's like who are you? <laughs> and it turns out he can see her and uh, they get talking and they fall in love yeah. and they kiss and um, they make plans. They try to figure out a way to kind of, um, he finds out that there are five of them living up there in the Citadel and he wants to make peace, kind of try to find a solution to move the Citadel to fix the problem for Weep while still making sure that these uh, gods want these blue kids um will not be killed because anyone in Weep would basically kill them on sight hmm. because there's so much hatred. Um, 
and then uh, one of these experts, he goes bored, so he decides to explode uh, one of the anchors holding the citadel up. So the citadel starts toppling, and Sarai falls off, and she dies. And she's the one who dies in the beginning. We talked about that last right. episode. Um, and uh, as this is happening... It looks like this angel is going to fall down and crush the whole town a weep. So Laster springs to action and he re- turns out that he could actually control this mess out him, this, um, this blue metal that no one can affect. Like none of the experts could make it work. Um, and he can fix it. So he he figures out, like he moves it, he f- fixes the anchor, the citadel writes itself, he closes the wings, sunlight comes down on the city. And then he finds out that Sarai, the, the girl that he met in his dreams that he loves, is dead. Hmm. So he takes her body, he, he flies one of the big uh, metal monsters up to the citadel and uh, there he forces Minya to catch her ghost and Minya is an awful little girl at this point and she's pissed off that he's forcing her to do something she had planned on doing anyways Mm -hmm. and they fight a bit and then she catches Sarai's ghost Sarai comes lands there on the citadel she becomes solid again because Minya can do that to the ghosts she goes up to Laszlo she kisses him and then her mouth opens and she says words but it's Minya's words saying basically you have to do anything I tell you to, or I'm gonna let Sarai's ghost go. And then it just stops. I can't just believe just that. I can't it. believe that's the hit. It just hit. <laughs> cliffhanger. Yes, such a cliffhanger. So rescheduling everything. We need to read. No, no, no. <laughs> we need to read the next book. Immediately. I will read the next book immediately. I will try to read the next book as soon as possible when when we get our <laughs> reading schedule under control again here. Mm. Um. The, I only found one continuity thing in this book. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah. And it's every night Sarai releases a hundred moths. Mm-hmm. And in her dream where her and Laszlo get hot and heavy, he crushes one moth with his head. So there's only 99 left. But then later on, when he runs out... Um, he leaves one moth sits on his hand, so there should only be ninety eight moths flying around the town. But she says there's ninety nine. Just saying, mm-hmm. math thing. Yes, and also I had a thing. I'm like, what happened to all the people? Because up in the citadel there were the six gods, and there was about thirty babies in the nursery. But they had been stealing people for like two hundred years. So this citadel should be overflowing with blow people, and we had no idea. The people in the town don't know what happened, and maybe the people up in the citadel do, do know, but they are not sharing this information with us yet. But they actually do explain that they don't know. So at least they answered that question. And I did figure out fairly early on that um, Laszlo was going to be a god. He was going to be blue skinned, and the fact that when he touches the mess out him, like his skin goes gray. Like, it, it, I figured it out in chapter 34. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Um, but it, it raises so many more questions. And what I really liked about this book, and what really got me thinking in this book, is really about the whole everyone in Weep hates the blue skinned people because their parents, the gods, did these awful things to them. But it raises questions like, should children pay for their parents' crimes? And I think this is something that generally in our society, we do tend to to punish people for their parents' things, which, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to just drop it. And and it's also hard if you've been subjected to this, to to, to separate your own feelings from from this people. But... But it, it raised it and it walked a very na- like very nice balanced line of, of asking these questions and making me reflect on it, which I really appreciated of this book. Yeah. Yeah. But in this book, as I we talked about last uh, episode, I was reading it to my daughter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the first chapter was not child proof, but no. the rest of it was actually okay. Uh, I We didn't get through the entire book together, but we got about 20 chapters in to uh, the two of us. Mm-hmm. But there was a lot of questions about <laughs> what the heck does that word mean, mom? And I'm yes. like, mm, good question. Uh, let's ask Google. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a little guess on that word. 
game to play today. Okay, good. And I have a few that I have highlighted. You also have one that I, I heard that two. you... Once you heard that two. I was having this issue, you were like, oh, let me look this up also. But um, I highlighted other stuff until then. I highlighted stuff that I liked. Like I always do. I posted them on, on yes. Instagram. So if you do want to see the section I highlighted, most of them are on Instagram. You can go and check it out. My favorite part being wherein Sarah says she slept like a baby. By which she meant that she had woken frequently crying, but she didn't feel the need to clarify that point. Because <laughs> everyone knows how babies sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. the most stupid expression of all. Like, You're right. How did you sleep? I slept like a baby. Also, you were awake a lot. <laughs> it's so true, though. Yeah. But uh, some of these words, we know what they are. But my daughter asked me what it was. For example, ignonymous. Do you know what ignonymous means? Are you asking me to define stuff? I'm just saying, guess what this word means. I have <laughs> Googled it, so I will Ign- let you know. Ignonymous. Ignonymous. I can't even try. My brain's not right. right but now. no, this no. word is not in our vocabulary okay. on a regular mean? basis. It means deserving of shame. Whoa, left field. That was left field. <laughs> I shall use this word a lot going forward. You are ignominious. You are ignominious. You are so deserving of shame. And people will be like, oh, great, thanks. It'll be awesome. Yeah, because it sounds like, ignominious sounds like it should be something e- extraordinary. Yes. Right? No, yes. it's not. Okay, next one. Beleaguer. But I know what beleaguer means. You do? Yeah, beleaguer is like... Um, it's not belittle, but it's like in the same uh, family of words. <laughs> now I can't think of. Uh... It means like, I guess, we're on the same train as yeah. what you're saying. It's a difficult situation. Yeah, okay. So uh, the board is supporting the beleaguered director amid mm. calls for his resignation. All right. And mm. in the story... What's the point of being old if you can't beleaguer the young with your vast stories? Ah, ah yes. Okay. And the next few words were impertinent, which was big, and imperious, which was also big, which yes. my daughter did not know. Uh, and adulation. Adulation, okay. And do you know what glaive means? Glaive. But they were glaive lights. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, look at me. I know all of these words, but no, I know none of these words. Glaive yeah. is a broadsword. Uh huh. Yep. He Why, lit up like life? a glaive at the sight of the alchemist. All so, right. dun dun dun. All right, all right, all right. We have quibbling and spectacles. And the last one is quailed. Do you know what quailed means? Quailed. I know what a quail is. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't know what a quail. It what? means showing apprehension. Okay, what's pellucid? No, oh, no idea. <laughs> that is it's why Google was my best friend during this entire maximum passage breath. of light without diffusion or distortion. You didn't what? notice? She has pellucid. <laughs> if I have no education, her eyes <laughs> pellucid blue. What? Yes. <laughs> and we already talked about this one. We'll put her in the poltrude. Yes, poltrude. Yeah, poltrude. Have you heard of it? Mm. Have you heard of poltroon? No. Nope. No. But I shall call you all poltroons for not knowing. No, it means coward. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. So, if you need an English lesson, read Strange the Dreamer. Mm-hmm. Have Google by your side or Siri you or <laughs> whoever and, you and, have. And add to your, you know, uh, word of day calendar. You really should. It's, uh, it's a great thing. To add to your word of the day calendar. Yes. Uh, yeah, you'll learn lots of new words and you can impress all your co-workers by calling them poltroons and saying it's a good thing. And then you, you'll you know that this is not and it will be funny. So, summary, I will read the second book yeah. of uh, Stranger Dreamer, which is uh, News of Nightmares. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I just will need to read this next book first, which is The 10,000 Doors of January. Yes. By... Alex E. Harrow. And uh, it is also one of these long... um, Not as long, though, because um, The Strange Dreamer was long, long. This one's only like 400-something pages in my Mm. inscribed. This one's inscribed. And um, 
I wasn't, I had not read about this book before I started nope. reading it. And it turned out, I was like, started reading it. And then I texted you and I'm like, look, these chapters are freaking long. So long. 30 pages plus each. And we should probably stop after two. And then I get to the end of two, I think. And then there's a chapter one. Again. At the end of two. And I'm like... It's somebody else's story. What is this? I guess... Then I went back into the into the table of contents. And then I saw after this chapter one, we came to chapter three. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll better read this one too. So it was next to 22 pages of a different book. So... <laughs> <laughs> Quick recap. The Quick story recap. is about a girl named January. Uh, her mom passes away and her dad is of a different unknown color in the Reddish beginning. dark skin is the, <laughs> is the phrase. Uh, it's in the beginning mistaken of, for black. In the beginning of the 19th century. Yeah. And some rich guy named Locke, which they're all last name named Locke, apparently. I find it funny, though, because it, this is a little bit cliche. If you're going to mm. have a book called The Ten Thousand Doors... Then you're going to have a character called Locke. Always, always. There's always at least one Locke in every book with doors in the title. But he hires the father to be some sort of... Stuff finder? Treasure finder. Yeah. And uh, he adopts the daughter. He calls well, he says, himself adopted, but not technically because her dad's still in the picture. He comes well, back he says every now and she's his ward. Okay. So, Nevertheless, he's not like he the lies greatest about her all the time. No, he lies about it. He, yeah. he keeps telling people that she's like the last living member of the royal family of Hawaii. Hawaiian. He keeps mm. like he he lies about where she's from all the time. But I think that's because racism in, is rampant at this point, and she gets yeah. mistaken for for like uh, service staff okay. at all time. Or like at some point, there's a guy who jokes about needing her for his. Uh, sugar plantation kind of thing so it's not great but where i'm at they have she has found a door and it's not a door door like walking into a house door it's a door door. it's just it's standing freestanding door it's not attached to anything but you have feels from the door that is going to lead you somewhere yeah and it leads her to a totally different place land world we're not 100 percent sure yet and this world white sand white buildings and she's like this looks amazing and i want to stay here um, then Locke finds out that she is reading this old diary and going through doors, and he puts them on fire. Was I, I thought it was her diary that she was writing a diary. No, he, she is reading it from this old Egyptian cask or something yeah, but, that her dad brings, and she finds yeah, this. Yeah, it's the old Egyptian cask, and she keeps finding stuff in it, and she keeps hmm. thinking that it's Locke that puts stuff in there to whenever her father disappoints her, she can find like a little treasure, and it's like without giving it to her, he puts stuff in there. But I think there's more hmm. to this because she also finds later on she finds this book, The Ten Thousand Doors, in this chest and this Egyptian chest and this the chapter one that's in the middle of chapter two is the first chapter of the 10,000 doors book but let's stop there and predict <laughs> from where we're both yeah. have read okay so what do you think but is I gonna have happen read a little bit further than you so but I haven't got there so don't no. spoil it for me <laughs> but it, this will be hard because my prediction is based on stuff that happens oh like okay 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 I mean, it's not that bad. She, there's this woman called Jane who shows up that her father sends there. Okay. Because she needs help. And he, he says he's going to hire her to be a companion to January. And then at one point, the grocer's son gives her a dog. And she names him Sinbad or Bad, which I find funny because he's a bad dog. <laughs> um, and he's also he's a bad dog. He's, he's not a very nice dog. He's nice to her, but he's not nice to anyone else. And... Um, and then the first chapter of the second book is a is the story of the Adelaide Lee Larson who meets a stranger at the field who came from a door from somewhere. Okay. So now That's we it. know doors come in and out of oh, dimensions we're not sure, lands we're not sure, worlds we're not sure. And this book, like uh, one of my favorite books, uh, yeah. also has footnotes. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So I like I like footnotes. What was you... it the, the Never Night that had so many footnotes? Like I half, did not read that. But... Half the story was in footnotes. You should. It's fantastic. Yeah, you but remember listen I to listened it. to it and I was like, awful. Oh, I could this not is... listen to it. I had to go back like six times. I gave I it 13 not... minutes, I think, total. And well, I have read some bad read, books. <laughs> and I read the whole three uh, trilogy of I three and it was amazing. I know. But I predict. Yeah. That January, Jane and Bad will adventure to other worlds. And that January's... Because January's dad has gone missing, 
uh, they found his camp abandoned and they don't know where he is. So I think they will go to try to find him. And I think it will turn out that January's dad is from one of these other worlds. Yes, yes. I have a similar prediction that I think that uh, January and her dad and, well, mom came from a door or came from a different world. And in that world, they have different abilities. So I think there's some abilities coming in because she could see doors but Locke can't and things like that. So I think she has like a vision that other people don't and she's able to to travel. So I called them travelers because there's a TV show called Travelers where they get to travel through time. But I think they're going to be able to travel through time and worlds. And I love that shit so much. So I can't wait to continue reading this book. And now it's book club time. Time. So uh, read along with us. We are reading The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. And uh, we will have finished it by next week. So you better get on reading because, well, otherwise you're going to fall behind. <laughs> These are long ass books. We promise lighter, shorter stuff next, next week. Uh, next week. <laughs> uh, but until then, happy reading. and uh, Happy reading. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Ceron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erase Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and on Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.